So Richard Halliburton traveled the world in the 1920s and 30s, which was a really unique time to be traveling because it was between World War I and World War II. He was too young to fight in World War I, and he died before World War II. So he existed in this little uh, short, brief period of time that was just unique in our history. And he used that time like none of his peers did. He graduated from Princeton, and they all went off and had normal jobs. And he went off gallivanting around the world doing the most incredible things. And um, then when he got home from those travels, he would tour the U.S. and uh, he would write his book and he would give lectures and he was famous for it. Some of the trips that he took, so his first one, The Royal Road to Romance, he traveled around the world very vagabond style. This is before he had any money. And then after that he had a little bit of funding from his book and he traveled Italy and Greece following Homer's Odyssey. He went around to all the sites that were supposedly the sites in the Odyssey and he was such a literature and history buff, he was just ecstatic about that trip. And then after that, he <laughs> found a pilot and a two-seater biplane. This is when planes were pretty new, and cameras as well. He was <laughs> kind of a pioneer in both of those areas. But he flew a biplane around the world. They shipped it over to London and then flew it all the way to the Philippines before flying it home, or shipping it home. And he uh, like flew to Timbuktu, and he... Uh, followed the Silk Road in India and just all these amazing things and technology that was really quite new at the time. And then he got uh, money to go on a trip through Central and South America and he did all of those areas, which I'm not recreating on this trip because <laughs> that's a lot. Also, I've been to a lot of those places. <laughs> but then his final trip was called Seven League Boots and he had money from his publishers to go wherever he wanted to go as long as it would create a story. So he just did all of these crazy trips all over the place. He went to Ethiopia, he went to Russia, he went to Georgia, and none of it was linear. And he just kind of went wherever he felt like going and interviewed people like um, Haile Selassie, the king of Ethiopia, and one of the executors of the royal family in Russia. He managed to actually meet these people and interview them. He, like I said, he had a silver tongue. <laughs> I don't know how I could ever get myself into situations like that, the way that he did. Um, but then after that, that was his last trip. He was going to sail the Chinese junk and was lost at sea. Wow. Yeah, a brief, intense life. That's actually the name of a book that was written about him. <laughs> That's a very good way to describe him. He was from a wealthy family, and he was set up, but he didn't actually use any of that money for his travels. So he, he made it to Europe by working on a ship. Every time, well, the first time that he went out, he worked on a ship and he pretended that he had experience and didn't have any. <laughs> he was really good at bluffing his way into things. And he worked his way across the Atlantic and then arrived with like $20 in Europe. And that's really kind of what he traveled on. Um, he had a knapsack with a couple books and a toothbrush in it in a linen suit. And he bought a bicycle with that money and rode it all around Europe and I don't know, everything, it sounds like everything was just ridiculously cheap back then. <laughs> $20 went a long way. Richard Halliburton was lost at sea when he was doing a kind of a promotional stunt. He was trying to sail a Chinese junk from China to San Francisco. And somewhere along the way, his ship went down along with the entire crew. And he was lost at sea at a very young age. My entire adventure will be very present online. I have a Twitter account where I will be posting all sorts of tidbits from the road. That is at uneven tenor. I have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash uneven tenor. And I'll be posting a lot of photos there and updates from the road. And then I also have a website, uneventenor.com. And on there, I will have full blog entries. I'll be posting a lot of photos of my own that are well, I'll be recreating a lot of Richard Halliburton's photos. He has these great photos in his books from the 1920s and 1930s. And I'm going to try to revisit those same places with the same perspective and re-photograph them and see how they've changed in the past century. So there's going to be a lot of really interesting stuff going up on the website.